I'm going to show you guys my Flying Raijin 2.0 build, which is even better than the first, and we're going to start right now. What's up guys, Reckless here, welcome back to another video. So, shortly after I posted my video of the Flying Raijin version 1.0, I started messing around with the build to get a little bit more damage. And it turned out from a little more damage to a lot more damage output. If you guys would like to see the version 1.0 of this build, then you can by clicking on the annotation at the top right of the screen or at the end of this video. But since I posted that video, a lot has changed and I have been getting tons of requests for the updated version and I keep saying that it was coming, it was coming. Well, today is that day. This build revolves around Soul Shatter damage, but is no longer focused entirely on it like version 1.0 was, weak point damage, critical hit damage, and spectral takedown. Also, this build isn't as squishy as version 1.0 either. Between the resistances and when you build up your overhealth, you cannot be touched, and spectral takedown helps a lot with this as well. Once again, they can't kill you if they can't hit you or see you coming. So let's get started. And first, we are going to go ahead and start with the gear. As you guys can see, we are still using the Illumina Valor Plate. And with this Valor Plate, it gives us plus 15% weak point damage. And our Archon Fury effect is when you pop Archon Fury, you unleash a shockwave that deals physical damage and reveal enemy weak points. During Archon Fury, unleash a shockwave every one second that deals physical damage and reveals enemy weak points. Then we get plus 40% weak point damage and then plus 40% weak point damage whenever you perform a um, death blow. Next, let's go over the weapons. As you guys can see, I am still using the Twin Dragons. However, this is a different version of the Twin Dragons than what I use in version 1.0. This Twin Dragons actually has the Wanderer's Ambition primary, and that is while Inner Focus is active, you deal plus 47% damage and enemies deal plus 25% damage to you. But this also uh, has gain 11% polarity attack charge whenever you perform a critical hit. And then as for the secondary, we have plus 12% critical hit chance, plus 25% critical hit damage, and then plus 7% weapon technique charge speed. If you learn anything from me when it comes to these builds, know this. Whenever you use dual blades, please get one that has weapon technique charge speed on it. This will help you build up your northern technique faster. Please use this. Next, we have the Wanderer's Ambition. So, I actually do use this whenever um, something happens in the game, like a glitch. I will switch to the Wanderer's Ambition, which does have the same effect. As for the secondary, it gives me plus 14% uh, Rampage Charge Speed, plus 40% Weak Point Damage, plus 22% Critical Hit Damage, and then plus 5% Critical Hit Chance. Next, for our Charm, I am using the Lion's Talisman, and the primary on this is whenever you perform a critical hit, gain 6% Weapon Technique Charge and 31% Weapon Technique Charge Speed for 10 seconds. As for the secondary, we have 40% weak point damage, 21% critical hit damage, 6% critical hit chance, and then another 20% weak point damage. As for our amulet, we are using Mark of the Duelist, and this for the primary gives me or restores 98 health whenever you perform a critical hit. And we are doing critical hits on this a lot. As for the secondary, we have plus 21 critical hit damage, plus 10 critical hit chance, plus 7% Archon Fury duration, and then another plus 21% critical hit damage. For the first ring, we are using the Ancestral Band. Primary on this is whenever you hit a weak point, gain 2% Archon Fury charge and plus 38% Archon Fury charge speed for 10 seconds. As for the secondary, we got plus seven uh, shield charge speed, plus 30 physical damage, plus 13 overhealth from banners, and then 21% uh, Archon Fury damage. Next ring, we have the Zui's Embrace. Primary on this is whenever you hit a weak point, 
gain 248 over health and your over health no longer degenerates. This ring is going to help you dramatically inside the Ascended Tower Trials or the ATOT. As for the secondary, we have plus 22 Void Resistance, plus 30 Physical Damage, plus 20 Physical Resistance, plus 6% to all resistances. And then as for our Lifestone, we are using the Archon's Tier. Primary effect on this last 10 seconds and we get plus 36 critical hit chance plus 145 critical hit damage for the secondary effects which also last 10, uh, 10 seconds plus 20% critical hit damage plus 20% weak point damage plus 40 weapon technique damage and then we also restore 59 health whenever we actually defeat an enemy. And last but not least for the banner we are using the Mesa's banner roll. And while uh, you're in the banner aura, you gain plus 28% critical hit chance, plus 63% critical hit damage. Secondary, also while in the aura, plus 22% dual blade damage, plus 24% weak point damage, plus 20% critical hit damage, and then plus 5% critical hit chance. Now, let's go ahead and go into the augments. We are starting off with Shirty, and unfortunately, I do not have a primal version it continues to elude me but once i do get a primal version i will be switching this one out for the primal version of the shirty primary effect on this is whenever you hit an enemy with your northern technique expose the enemy's weak points and deal 98 percent weak point damage the next time you hit a weak point as for the secondaries we have plus 24 percent weapon technique damage a little bit more soul shatter buildup plus 20 percent uh, dual blade damage and then plus 113 spirit Then we are using force barrier. This is going to help you stay alive while you are doing the ascendant tower trials Please do not change this out with anything else Primary on this is while above 50% over health your attacks cannot be interrupted Which means you cannot be knocked down or knocked back or moved in any other direction unless the enemy grabs you and that is huge when fighting bosses. Secondary on this is plus 34% air resistance, plus 17% physical resistance, and then plus 106 spirit. Then we have Divine Conduit. And this is the second way we actually build up Archon Fury charge speed. Uh, primary on this is gain plus 50% Archon Fury charge speed for 10 seconds whenever you are hit. While you have Force Barrier active and the enemy or the boss or ads do hit you while you're fighting a boss you are gaining your archon fury and that is amazing secondary on this gives us plus 39 and 19 archon fury damage then we have cosmic dance which the primary reads gain the blessing of luck whenever you defeat an enemy with a takedown remember blessing of luck actually gives you extra crit hit chance. For the secondary, we got plus 41 and plus 22% weapon technique damage. Then we have the Lion's Pride, which we gain 66 over health whenever you defeat an enemy. As for the secondary, we have plus 36% fire resistance and then plus 82 um, spirits coming up. We have the Frost Fire, which this gives us plus 39% critical hit damage during rampage when you are using dual blades whether you are inside your northern technique or not inside you will build up rampage a lot and very fast this helps out with that critical hit damage secondary on this gives you plus 47 percent and plus 19 percent weapon technique damage coming all the way down we are using evisceration now which you gain the blessing of power whenever you perform a critical hit you will be performing critical hits, so this is huge. This is one of the augments that actually replaced loyalty. Secondary on this is plus 43% weak point damage, plus 14% rampage bonus damage, and then plus 21% weapon technique damage. Then we have primal energy, and yes, this is a primal version, which we gain 218 over health whenever you use your life stone. As for the secondary, we got plus 39 Archon Fury damage and then plus 89 Might. And then for the last one, we have Focus, which we gain 69 over health whenever we perform 
a critical hit. As for the secondary, you got plus 40% weak point damage and then plus 20% weapon technique damage. So next we are going to be going into the skills and you guys can copy my skills all you want. It's okay. However, just remember, you do not need any points in ailments because you will not be doing ailments at all. You're only doing pure raw damage. What you do need points in, however, is at least five points in takedowns. Once you get level five, you open up spectral takedown and that reads for 30 seconds after defeating an enemy with your weapon technique, and in this case, your Northern technique, you can perform a free spectral takedown by holding L2 to aim and R3 to execute. Remember, when using dual blades, they work entirely different than any other weapon in the game because you're doing the Northern technique on a charge versus um, a bar. So you can constantly chain spectral takedowns with dual blades and it's amazing. You will be flying around the map like it's cool. Now I have, I don't wanna say perfected it, but there have been times where I can chain spectral takedown up to six times if there are enough ads. So that is huge. So another thing that we did not go over is ascension. Now you can put points anywhere you want into your ascension level, however you feel is necessary. However, in this build, definitely focus on weak point damage, definitely focus on spirit, and probably weapon technique, charge speed, or damage as well. Just anything that's gonna help you with your dual blades. Next, for the powers. What is very, very important is number 175. And I'm actually doing testing on this to find out which one is better. Um, either your Northern Technique applies plus 25% Soul Shatter buildup, or your Light Attack applies plus 10% Soul Shatter buildup. I'm currently using the, the one on the left, but I do think that the one on the right may actually be better and I don't know. We're gonna ha just have to do a little bit more testing with this build to find out which one I like the most. And when I do find out, I will put it down in the comment section below and let you guys know. Okay, so now that we went over all of the gear, all of the stats, all of the augments, the ascension, the skills, etc., how do you actually play this build? Well, for the ads and bosses, you always want to start off with your light melee attack in order to build up your northern technique charge. Then, once you have at least one full bar, go ahead and pop your northern technique. From there, against adds, you can kill an enemy, then teleport around the map with spectral takedown. And this is so much fun. Since we now get our Archon Fury from the Ancestral Band and the Divine Conduit, we no longer have to depend on loyalty. For bosses, after popping your Northern Technique, you want to build up your overhealth past halfway so when the boss hits you, you don't get knocked back and you actually start gaining Archon Fury charge speed. Once you have your Archon Fury, go ahead and pop it and let the massive damage begin. <laughs> However, due to all of the base damage and buffs from Shirty, Frostfire, Cosmic Dance, and Evisceration, you may not even have to use your Archon Fury in order to kill the boss because Archon Fury pretty much will be like overkill. One thing to note when using this build in the tower is to pay attention to the boons. You wanna look for boons that help out with any type of damage except ones from ailments because as I said earlier, this build does not use ailments at all. Just be careful in rooms that take away your life stone because if your over health goes below halfway and you can't get to a health orb, you are gonna have trouble staying alive, especially on rooms that actually have macros in them. Other than that, this build should be able to melt almost any boss like it's cool and it's extremely fun flying around killing everything with spectral takedown. If you guys decide to make this build, let me know how you like it down in the comment section below. Real quick, the Everything Godfall Discord is live. 
It's a place where the Godfall PlayStation 5 and PC community can come together, chill, LFG, get info on the game, watch videos, and if you are a Godfall content creator, you can post your videos and when you stream in order to gain more exposure. We have well over 150 members and we're still growing by the day. A link to the Discord will be shown on screen and in the description box below. And that, my friends, brings us to the end of the video. And I will see you guys in the next one.